check that out. Hey guys, Rob Robolod from Toolbox Buzz, and we recently took the brand new Gen 2 Milwaukee nailers, 16 and 15 gauge finished nailers, out into the field to use for several weeks. We then brought them here in the shop to do some more testing. And my first impressions for you guys is that these nailers install fasteners with clean, consistent nail holes. And the most impressive thing about the nailers was how fast they install nailers. When using the nailer, another big difference that we noticed from the earlier generation was how smooth it was, less recoil. So the Gen 1 and Gen 2 are both very similar in weight, but Gen 2 was redesigned to be more ergonomic. The Gen 2 is actually narrowed and it actually improves the line of sight to the work surface, allowing better access in tight spots as well. The Gen 2 also has way less recoil and most importantly, the quality of the fastener hole has been improved. There's a marked improvement, reduction I should say, in the, in the hole that is left over by the nail and the striker. The earlier Gen 1 finished nailers had several negative user feedback issues that resulted in a back to drawing board approach. Uh, some of that feedback on that Gen 1 you may have. It was a double striker mark, oversized holes in the material, a bulky nose, front end of the nose, um, and the tool tip that kind of inhibited your sight lines inconsistent toenailing results, and it was also um, it's a word, uh, uh, finicky with different manufacturer nails. Now, Milwaukee gave the Gen, New a complete Gen 2 a complete overhaul, and here's what's different. The earlier Gen 1 finished nailers were very powerful, too powerful, in fact, that they had too much recoil. To address this, Milwaukee actually reduced the energy output, the PSI in the tank, which results in less wear and tear on the tool and less jumping of the material um, and a smaller nail hole with less recoil. The Gen 2 nailers have an inner cylinder that has nitrogen and an air spring mechanism, like a piston. And then there's an outer cylinder. The area between those two cylinders is filled with nitrogen to a, a specific PSI. Now, the, the nitrogen actually has two primarily, primary benefits. The biggest benefit is using pure nitrogen, it's, it's less permeable through the, uh, the rubber seals than compressed air, which lowers the risk of pressure leaks through those seals and increases the durability and the amount of nail fires before actually requiring service. The second benefit, while much lesser, is less corrosion, oxidation buildup um, over time. And they use pure nitrogen, 99% uh, percent plus, versus compressed air, which is, which is smart. Now the feedback on that Gen 1 was that the nail holes were too big. One interesting fact was the dynamic movement of the tool and the striker pin slipping off of the nail head was causing those double marks. When Milwaukee actually filmed that nailer and slowed it way down, they discovered that the striker would drive the nail and then slip off at the last second, creating a larger hole. And to the naked eye, it looked like two distinct holes. With the Gen 2 finish nailer, Milwaukee did three things to improve and address that. First, they redesigned the striker completely, the component that drives the nail. And it now leaves much smaller holes in the material. Secondly, they improved the nail guiding and feeding components to ensure the nail is always in the proper position to be fired when inside the tool. And third, uh, they distributed the tool weight a little bit in a way to ensure that the striker was not slipping off the nail head while the nail was being driven which was another factor that led to larger holes and double striker marks and, and stuff with the Gen 1. Now our testing and our field use showed Gen 2 is an absolute improvement. Our earlier testing, we found that the Gen 1 installed fasteners about 3 16 off center, which we felt was way too much. There was too much play in that contact bracket. Gen 2 doesn't have this issue. Milwaukee changed the whole wire rolled uh, tip that they used to a precision point resulting in way better line of sight and getting the tool into narrower spots, which is nice. Our testing found that the contact point was accurate. By lining up the white arrow, you were able to put the nail exactly where you want it. The Gen 2 nailers are also a little bit longer than the Gen 1, and that slimming down allows the tool to get into tighter spots. Um, Gen 1 nailers um, had Milwaukee's standard old M18 tool belt hook, <laughs> 
and Milwaukee changed the style of that hook with a larger, better flare-out. They also moved the hook from the tank location up top to the bottom of the tool. Now, as a right-handed user, we think the hook is okay, but not great. Now, here's why. Considering that 85% of the population uh, is right-handed, mounting on the left-hand side of the tool for right-handed users, we found that the hook is partially blocked by the magazine, which prohibits a smooth and easy just hooking on your belt without looking. That's what you want, right? So hooking onto a loose tool bag was fine, but trying to hook it on your belt, your, your tool belt belt or something, you needed to use a second hand. You definitely had to look to engage that clip. Now, once it's hung, the nailer hangs better off the belt and is way more balanced. When the hook is mounted on that other side, on the right side of the tool for a left-handed user, it's flawless, works great. Let me see, they, um, the battery orientation was changed and is now angled, and that allows the tool to sit upright on a battery pack and magazine. And they also improved fastener capacity. So the Gen 1 was designed to work with all brands of 34 degree DA nails. But the reality is not all 34 DA nails are the same. They all differ from manufacturers to manufacturers. Just a little bit of tolerance difference. To address this, Milwaukee improved that guiding, the nail guiding and feeding systems to accommodate less sensitivity um, to, to those tolerances. Now, FN style and DAN style nails are not interchangeable. I want to note that because that's a problem with some of these nailers. They have different collation angles and different head shapes. So while the differences might seem slight, it is enough to jam your nailer. So you got to use the right size nails. Now you can read more about DA and FN nails and the differences, differences between 15 and 16 gauge nailers at toolboxbuzz.com. There's two different articles. All right. How many nails can this do per charge? Well, M Milwaukee uh, made some changes to the piston and, and, and things, but they didn't, and reducing the pressure, but it didn't change the runtime. All, right, all it did was improve the depth of drive and better nail holes. Uh, this new design that they did, um, you're gonna pretty much get the same runtime as the Gen 1 nailer. The Gen 2 nailer magazine, it's gonna hold 110 DA nails from either an inch and a half up to two and a half, and when you use a 2.0 amp hour battery, you're gonna see 750 nails for the 15 gauge nailer, 800 nails per charge on the 18 gauge nailer. Um, all right, let's talk about thermal protection because Milwaukee did do some big changes there. Gen 1 would hit thermal protection approximately 100 to 150 nails when fired fast. Tool Reviews had a blast with that, right, with their videos. The Gen 2 finish nailer can fire 350 to 750 plus nails, depending on how fast you're nailing. Now, job site users should never find themselves hitting a thermal protection limit, a real job site user, a pro tool user, um, whereas it was kind of possible on that Gen 1. Now, while the speed might be fun to talk about, guys, and, and interest some production trim carpenters, the real test on the job is, you know, fastener holes, depth of fastening, line of sight, accuracy, and just doing good work, right? Quality work. Uh, all right, the user interface was updated, so the power switch and the mode button are now in line, resulting in a cleaner look. They're separate and in line, and they're easy to use and access. In fact, the power button, it still needs to be pressed for approximately two seconds to power on or off the tool. The Gen 1, if you remember, you have to hold that power switch down for five to seven seconds before turning the tool off. Super annoying. Um, I will note that the, the tool will power itself off in 60 minutes, um, of inactivity, no use, and a green power indicator light illuminates the entire time that the tool is on and connected to the battery. Now I want to talk a little bit about performance of the tool, the Gen 2 nailers, um, and my experience using these nailers. So we use both, we found both, in, um, they install finished nails consistently at the desired depth that I was able to set it. Throughout our testing, the nailers, they absolutely performed flawlessly, there was no jams and no misfired nails. The crew loved that there's no ramp up time for the nailer um, and then it placed a nail as fast as they were able to accurately aim and pull the trigger. That's a plus. Also the recoil is way smoother. They noticed that right away. In the field, we mostly use these nailers for some PVC trim. We were working outside. We also had a, a remodel where we were doing some lath and stuff. In the shop, we tested the nailer by fastening different wood species, oak, poplar, and plywood. And here, we looked at things like speed, fastener penetration, nail hole size, that was important, you guys, depth adjustment, toe nailing, magazine loading, unloading and jams and stuff, as well as LED light. So the results were the same as the field. We experienced consistent depth, 
fast fastening and no nail jams. There was no issue with the toenailing and the nailer was powerful enough to toenail into oak as well. But you'd have to, you'd have to set that depth adjustment to get it right. The finished nailers consistently perform like pneumatic nailers when we drive in nails um, with the proper depth in oak and it left a clean nail hole matching the nail head, which was nice. We didn't experience, like I said, any jams with the oak. Um, if you did get a jam, it's as simple as uh, unlatching the jam latch at the top of the tool and pull the clip out and do your thing, take the battery out. Let's talk a little bit about the LED. Um, it will turn on with a trigger pull without actually the bracket engaged, which is nice, giving you that ability to maybe light up your work area before you place your nail um, and ready to fire it. The LED light is located on the right side of the tool. It is bright, but it absolutely casts a shadow on the left side of the tool. As a right-handed user, this is the side that I mostly use. Yeah, I nail on both sides and different things, but unfortunately, there's just no space on the nailer. If you look at it, there's no space to put an LED light. Kind of wish they did. The finished nailer will operate in um, single and um, contact bump fire actuation. And Milwaukee claims that the nailer can bump fire three to four nails a second. Um, we did it, we played with it, but I never used a nailer that way. Um, let me see. Um, once it's powered on, the actuation uh, selector switch light on that user interface I talked about, it actually stays on the entire time. So the indicator light will tell you which nailing mode you're in. Um, I think, I don't know if I talked about the depth of drive, but it was easy to use and dial in. And um, there's a lockout, fire lockout at four to five fasteners. All right, so how much does the Gen 2 nailers cost? Well, the 15 gauge is gonna go as a kit for 399 and the 16 gauge nailer uh, as a kit as well. Overall thoughts, look, having a battery operated finish nailer performs as well as a pneumatic nailer, that just makes sense to me. The most impressive feature of these nailers though is the rate of firing that is achieved with zero ramp up time. That impressed the hell out of me. I was able to install accurate fasteners into the oak um, at a decent rate of work with no disruption to my work speed. Um, and to follow in the footsteps of the most interesting man in the world. I don't always drive finish nailers into oak, but when I do, I prefer the Gen 2 nailer. Just kidding, guys. If you like the video, please just give us a thumbs up. Leave me a comment. I love seeing and hearing from you guys. I try to answer you when I can. And please, subscribe and hit that notification bell right there. I'm Rob Robillard. We'll see you next time here at Toolbox Buzz. Pretty good.